Hi, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and this week we're going to look at five affordable favourite baritone ukuleles. We've got five ukes from five different brands here. All of them tick the boxes of what people are looking for when they first tread into the world of that deeper octave baritone ukulele sound. Um, if you're not familiar with what a baritone does and how it's different to a normal ukulele, a normal ukulele is tuned GCEA. Uh, a baritone ukulele is tuned five semitones lower, so you will have to learn different notes if you tune them to DGBE. We are going to look at one ukulele in the video today that is tuned to GCEA, but my advice to you, and it, probably the thing that you're looking to learn from this video if you're completely new to baritones, is to embrace the DGBE, tr try and learn the new chord shapes, and it will reward you 10 times over. I'm largely a baritone player myself. When I perform, I like to sing along with a baritone ukulele. The deeper, richer notes and the bigger body work so perfectly in harmony together. And if you do tune them to GCEA, you do rob the ukulele of the frequency range that it's built for. So it, it works, but it's not the optimum setup for a baritone. That being said, we're going to look today at some Ohana's, Lanakai's, Flights, and more. We're going to start with the Ohana BK10. Let's begin. First up today, we're going to take a look at the Ohana BK10. When I first started working at Southern Ukulele Store 15 years ago, the Ohana BK10 was the first ukulele that I was given to learn some chord shapes on. And I've always liked it ever since, but it's only in the last seven or eight years I've really figured out why. The baritone ukulele is a bit different to the other sizes. Its history is still being written, it's still developing, and there's no fixed scale length or shape to a baritone ukulele that makes it inherently baritone. The baritone isn't actually Hawaiian in origin. It was uh, <laughs> two different companies at the same time patented baritone ukulele designs. You had the Favilla Company and you had the Vega Company. And they are slightly different. And what's happened over the years is different uh, different companies have evolved those designs in their own way. BK10 follows the design of the very, very early Favillas. So the Ohana baritone ukuleles are the closest thing in scale length and shape to the very first baritone ukuleles. And as a bit of a traditionalist, maybe that's why I like them. This is laminate mahogany on top, back and sides. There's no, no thrills about this. Very, very simple sound hole rosette which is a plastic three-ply rosette. You have a, an open coal fingerboard and bridge up to a 38 mil nut width, nice wide nut width with a nice wide 29 mil string spacing. It feels good in your hands. If you've got big hands, this is gonna feel very comfortable, but don't be afraid if you have small hands because the string spacing is still, it's still narrower than you would have if you were to learn the guitar. So don't be intimidated by the baritone. You have open gear tuners, which are Grover style tuners. And the only other feature really is the bridge. The bridge is a classical guitar style bridge, so it's long and it has uh, that tie-on uh, mechanism to it. The BK10 is where probably more people who have left Southern Ukulele Store have started on the baritone than any other uke over the last decade and a half. And I still love to recommend it as much now as I did when I had hair and no beard. <laughs> Let's give the BK10 a play and see what you think. Next up today we have the Lanakai LU21B. The Lanakai looks on the surface very similar to the Ohana that we've just looked at, but actually the scale length, which is the measurement from here to the bridge, is more than an inch longer. So the ukulele itself is longer, it feels more tense in your hands, there's more tension under the strings. The body is laminate uh, akumi, so a mahogany substitute, very similar to mahogany. You wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. It has a slightly more um, ostentatious cream rosette, which I really dig. And you have a technical wood fingerboard and bridge on this model. It has a 38 mil nut width that actually measures up closer to 39. It feels nice and wide. Of the UKs we're gonna look at today, this is the uke with the chunkiest neck. 
it has cream binding down the fingerboard so you can see the dots are in dark colors so if you're looking down in a dark room and learning to play i for one find this easier to to glance at and find my position on the neck you have some country and western style open gear tuners on this ukulele and it has front and back cream binding one feature that might make you choose Lanakai over something else at the same price is that these ukuleles come with two strap buttons and the Lanakais come in a gig bag it's not a padded gig bag but a gig bag nonetheless let's give the LU21B a play and see what you think Next up today we have the Flight Iris Baritone. The Flight Iris Baritone is not a massive jump up in price from the use we've looked at so far but it is the entry point for something with a solid top. This has a solid spruce top stained black with laminate mahogany back and sides. It has front and back cream binding and a simple uh, faux mother of pearl rosette. You have this blue electric pick guard, which is quite easily removable with some patience. Um, you can answer a question. I, I might have already mentioned this in the concert video I did previously, but these ukuleles, uh, the pick guard is, is not really hard glued down, and we're not sure whether customers would prefer us to glue it down um, before we send it or leave it so that they can remove it at their own convenience. Let us know in the comments section if you are the customer what you would prefer. You have an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge with side mounted dots going up to a slotted headstock with these really nice robust open gear tuners. Of the tuners we've looked at so far these feel the most substantial under the fingers. Uh, the nut width is 38 mil but the neck depth itself is not as deep as the Lanakai and Ohana we've just looked at previously so it feels a bit more contoured and a bit more we like to say modern because modern ukuleles tend to have taken out and trimmed all the fat so to speak on the you know on the where your hands go and the feeling of the ukulele if you've never played with a slotted headstock before they can feel a bit strange but I really like on the flights the volute on the back of the neck your thumb will find the natural right point as you play and that's kind of invaluable really because let's face it we, we don't want to be looking down at our fingerboard forever for a beginner and we will get to a point where we want to be doing 70% of our playing completely by feel. I had to cut away then. I can't. I wish I could show you on camera, but um, I filmed this in the early hours of the morning. And while I was um, filming the video, just outside my shop, a cardboard cutout of Ed Sheeran just fell in front of the window of our shop. Um, rest in peace, Ed Sheeran. Um, yeah, uh, I wish I could have got that on camera, but I did still want to share it with you folks. Um, the Flight Iris also comes with a, um, a nice padded gig bag as well. So it's a complete package for not much more than the laminate ukuleles at the same price. Let's give the Flight Iris Baritone a play and see what you think. Next up we have the Snail SUB M1 and I might be biased but I really like the Snail Baritones partly because we willed them into existence. Snail ukuleles were by far our most popular brand going back four or five years and although other brands have caught up and produced similar models that do the same thing, for a time Snail were unstoppable and ukuleles like the S60T, the BHC5B and the SUTM1 were our three most popular ukes and we convinced Snail to make a run of each of those ukuleles in a baritone. Fast forward a few years and actually I think these are 
These must be our best-selling baritones. There's, there's quite a lot of time during the year where I'm waiting for them to come back into stock. They're very popular. They're slightly different to everything else we've looked at today. The scale length is closer to the scale length of an Ohana. It's actually somewhere in between the scale length of an Ohana and the Lanakai that we looked at earlier in the video. The nut width on this ukulele is 35 mil, so it's a narrower nut width, more akin to a tenor ukulele. So the neck feels like a tenor ukulele in your hands, which is ideal for someone with small hands who's looking for something more familiar, but still wants to learn in DGBE or something with a slightly bigger sound and tension um, in GCEA. The ukulele is laminate mahogany, finished with a high gloss. It has a simple sound hole rosette, an ebony fingerboard and bridge, which is a really nice hardwood and feels like a deluxe upgrade from the ukes that we're looking at in other parts of the video. It has a paddle style headstock with closed gear tuners and comes in a padded gig bag. So a really good complete package for someone looking for their first uke. Now I've got a treat for you. These ukes come to us in GCEA. I have strung one up in DGBE, I have this one in GCEA, I'm going to give you two sound samples now. The first one will be in DGBE, but then straight after I'll show you it in the tuning that they come in out of the box, which would be high G GCEA. Let's give them a play and see what you think. The last you can look at today is the Pono MGBK. The Pono MGBK is all solid mango. It's not it's not a ukulele that's trying to be too outlandish. It's very simple. There's no binding to it. Instead, the Ponos fo just focus on giving you the best ukulele at the price. It's simple but effective. The mango does differ wildly from one to the next. We're always happy to send photos to customers if they um, if they're at all nervous about what they're going to get. The fingerboard and bridge on this ukulele are Kiawe, which is a substitute to something like mahogany. It's not a common fingerboard wood, but it does keep in with the theme of the ukulele, which is this kind of rustic barrel look to it. You have an ebony faceplate, so the top of the headstock is black and really you know, dark and rich, with Grover open gear tuners. The Ponos feel different to everything else at this price. They feel more like scaled down guitars. It's like a guitar manufacturer has tried to make the perfect baritone ukulele. So they feel a bit thicker. Um, the actual sound of them is usually a bit darker and a bit deeper. Uh, it has a 35 mil nut width, so it's a narrower nut width again, but it feels precise. The neck is a very, dis it's a very distinct C shape, so it curves around back on itself. Very comfortable in the hands for all players. I'm going to give the Pono MGBK a play and see what you think. Thank you. 